Hi folks, welcome back to my tutorial. And for today's video, we're gonna take a look at this active crossover which is an analog processor. Now, you might ask, what is this device and is it important to have one? Well, it depends. If you have a passive or active full range speaker, then probably you don't need this device. Because full range speaker is designed to give you an output within the range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And then there are some active speakers, which is also full range, that comes with a built in crossover. Can be like 40 hertz to 20 kilohertz or 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And they can perform by itself without this device. Now, basically, in big events or some big situations like you have a subwoofer, a mid-high, probably you need this device. And what this does is it takes your full range input and gives you different outputs. And this device is designed to have three different configurations. It can be two-way, three-way, or four-way crossover. Now, let us discuss first the three-way crossover. Now, the three-way crossover means you have this input, which will be controlled by this knob, and your input will come from this input terminal and then you have three different outputs which will be designed for your subwoofer your mid-range and high frequencies which will be your Twitter and the three outputs will be on this output terminals and basically if this device is designed or configured for three-way crossover, it can be used as a stereo. As you can see at the back, you have two inputs, and each input can give you three outputs, total of six outputs. Now, what is the main purpose of this device? Now, basically, again, you can feed the input here, which is a full range signal and distribute that signal into three different regions basically designed for your sub mid and highs now there are some speakers that cannot handle like maybe 50 hertz or 60 hertz and you have to cut that frequency so that the speaker will be safe to use and for an instance your Compressor driver, which is the tweeter, is capable only of giving you 4 kilohertz, for example. Then you can set this knob to 4 kilohertz. Now, again, we have this input knob and three master volume for the three outputs. And we have these two knobs here, which will be the crossover point. Again, we have three outputs and within the low and mid, we have this crossover point which will be controlled by this knob. And the mid high in which the crossover point will be controlled by this knob. Again, if I want my subwoofer to give sound, then I have to turn this volume up at 0 dB. And then I want my crossover to have a crossover point at around probably, let's say, 110 Hz somewhere here and if I set this knob to 110 Hertz it means that my subwoofer will have a low pass filter at 110 Hertz while my mid speaker will have the same crossover frequency region which is also 110 Hertz in short our low will have a slope like this and our mid will have a slope like this 
at the same crossover point which is 110 Hz. And likewise, for the mid and high, if I want to have a crossover point for the compression driver at let's say 3 kHz or 4 kHz, somewhere here. Then we can set this knob into this position and at the same time, my low pass filter for the mid is the same as this frequency. It means, in summary, 110 Hz will be the crossover region for the low mid and 4 kHz will be the crossover region for the mid and highs. Now, we have this space inverter here which inverts the polarity or make your signal at 180 degrees out of phase. And pressing this button depends on how you hear it. It can sometimes be better when you press it, or this one, or this one. And probably it's better if you have a real-time analyzer or what we call the RTA. Now, we have this button right here, which is slow cut at 4 hertz. And what this does is, after giving you pull range, it cuts the frequency at 40 hertz. And it attenuates the signal below 40 hertz. Now, while setting the frequency right here, we have a button right here, which is crossover frequency multiplier by 10. And if you press this one, it means that this knob represents instead of let's say 140 hertz it means 1400 hertz resulting to 1.4 kilohertz and if you set it right here now it means 3.5 kilohertz instead of 350 because you press this knob which is a multiplier of 10. now i hope it's clear for you when using the three-way crossover configuration. Now, let's move to the two-way crossover configuration. In order to set this crossover unit to two-way, what you need is to set this button being pressed. As you can see, in order to use stereo two-way, you have to press this button right here. And now it's pressed and this one is not pressed. And now it's two-way, which means during two-way, if we are going to look at the lowest row right here, we have the high, not used, and low. Same wise, we have the high, not used, and low. Which means during stereo two-way, we can only use the low, and high and at this point in time we're not gonna use this one the mid and this one the mid for the right channel now since this device is set to two-way crossover we don't need this knob right here and we only need output which will be these two guys right here first let me just put the input And again, let me just put the output, which will be the low and mid-high. And for the right channel, we can use the low and mid-high. Again, we can use this device as a stereo when configured as two-way crossover. Turn this up, turn this up, turn this up, and turn this up. Now, the crossover region will only be one, which will be the region between your subwoofer and mid-high. And the knob that you are going to use will be this guy right here. And whenever we tweak this knob, 
it changes the crossover frequency region between the lows and the highs. Same wise on the right channel. And again, we can still use the Porto Hertz cutoff, low cut, and of course, we can still use the 10 times multiplier for both channels, which will be right this guy right here. And of course, when we have a two way or three way, we can sum the subwoofer output of both channels, the left and the right. And we are, if we are going to take the sum of both channels, then we only need one output, which will be this guy right here. And we don't need this one. Again, low output, mid output, and high output. Low output, mid high, mid output, and high output. And during the two-way configuration, we only need two outputs per channel, which will be low output and then mid-high. And then for the right channel, low output and mid-high. Now, there is one more configuration which is very rarely used, which is the four-way mono configuration. And if we are going to take a look, we only have six outputs right here. And if we will discuss about four way, it means we need to have four outputs per channel. And in this case, it is impossible. Now, the manufacturer designed this crossover unit to have a four way output, but in mono channel. It means you can only have one output, which will be this guy right here. And we don't need this one. And the output will be low, low mid, high mid, and high. Again, four way mono. We have mono channel input and four way output low, low mid, high mid, and high. And again, we don't need this one right here, and we don't need this one right here. It means these two channels will not be used, and the buttons will not be used also. The knobs will not be used, and we only need these four knobs. Again, low, low mid, high mid, and high. Now, we have four outputs, and it means we need to have three crossover region, which will be in between low and low mid, low mid and high mid, and high mid and high means three crossover regions and the knobs that you are going to use will be this guy right here for the low and low mid this guy right here for the low mid and high mid and lastly this guy right here which will be for the high mid and high and to set this into four-way mono we need to press this button right here which will be set into unpressed and pressed and as you can see the mono is now activated which is lighted in orange now let's use this device and see through the RTA